What's up, guys? Vapor Mr. J here. Alright, so I went to the vape shop today. We're going to do this as quickly as possible because we've got another video that we have to do. Alright, so I went to the vape shop today. Uh, picked up a second battery charger for my room, my bedroom, for when I'm up there playing video games and vaping. When my batteries die, I can just go ahead and throw them on the charger. And, uh, yeah. So, here's the battery charger. It's a small little guy. It's just a little tube air. And uh, it does come with a little cable, which I probably won't use. So, yep. Yeah. All right, enough about that. All right, so, review of the uh, the Avid Life uh, Timekeeper and the uh, Goon version 1.5. That's So, we're going to go ahead and talk about the mod first. going to run through it real quick. Take the battery out, even though I locked it. Always be smart, guys. Don't be stupid. Probably could have polished it before the video because it's starting to tarnish again. Alright. Alright, so the mod itself. Well, what do I think of it? It's a really nice mod to hold. Uh, a little bit on the pricier side for me. Um, <clears throat> but it is nice to hold. Uh, it does hit hard. Um, so, yeah. Uh, one thing I do have to say is when taking the uh, switch apart, uh, be careful because there's magnets in there. And if you put one of the magnets in wrong and it attracts to the other magnet, the smaller magnet will slam up against the big magnet, shat shattering it, which happened to me because I wasn't paying attention. And I didn't check the polarities before I uh, tried putting it back together. So, yeah. I'm going to take the switch apart without trying to drop the magnet so I can show you what I'm talking about. Alright, so I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this. Alright, so that's what it looks like. So yeah, there's a magnet down inside there. And I got to put this back together Make sure you don't lose your magnets as well. That would be a bad idea. And you just put the switch back together like that. Um, like I said, make sure you don't lose your magnets. Also, double check to make sure your switch moves freely, as mine does. Uh, because if you have it set in wrong, what can end up happening is uh, you could um, get it stuck and it'll auto fire. So just bear in mind, keep keep that in mind. So that's what the switch housing looks like. And I just found a better way to uh, take it apart, check my polarities first before I try to put it back together. Um, it is hard. It is a little bit tedious to fiddle with because you have to fight the force of the magnets repelling each other. Um, but the, yeah. So, like I said, be careful with the magnets. They are brittle. They do break pretty easily if uh, you mess something up 
or do something wrong. So just be careful with that. But uh, overall, I would give the mod a um, 7.5, and that's for the mod itself. It hits hard. Um, it, it hits really hard for it being a uh, copper, brass, and aluminum setup. Alright, so the RDA, the Goon version 1.5, what do I think of it? Well, first off, the fucker is a pain in the ass to build on. I like clamps sometimes. I think they're neat. They're, they're pretty cool. Clamps are nice. Um, but, I would not recommend this to a beginner. Now, if you're more advanced, hey, if you want to pick this up, go ahead. It's a really nice RDA. It has really good flavor. Uh, it has decent airflow. It had really good cloud production. Um, uh, the drip tip's nice on it. It's a nice little shorty. Not too short, but not too long at the same time. So, uh, I would rate the RDA. Just because of the clamps itself, it's going to get a 5. And that's for the, uh, the RDA itself. I'll rate the mod and the RDA at the same time. Alright, so let's go ahead and take a hit off of it. Alright, so as you see, it hits pretty freaking hard. Go ahead, get a little pulse for you. And that's just a single, or single coil. That's just a basic round wire build. Uh, 22 gauge canthal, 4 wrap around 3 millimeter uh, coiling jig. That's what I use now on e screwdrivers anymore. Coiling jig is much easier. Um, coming to the point, I think I already said, I think I said 0.14, which is the resistance. I don't know if I said the resistance yet, but that's what it is, 0.14. Uh, and she's a check of fine. What I like about this mod is that, not the mod itself, the biggest thing I like about the mod, which I forgot to mention, is the way the switch is. Because it's got the keyhole switch, I can press this off to the side right here, watch. It fires no matter what, and that's the biggest issue I was having with the, not so much the tugboat, but that's the biggest issue I was having with the, um with the uh, tsunami mech is if you get it off to the side sometimes it doesn't fire and I don't like that another issue I'm having with the tsunami is it the button heats up like it like a lot if it's not making good connections so let me back up some uh, I did clean oh, well me and my grandmother clean back here so I can actually hey motor I don't think you've ever seen me this far back no Like I said, like she produces fucking vapor production to hell. Oh, that was a bad idea. Whew. Alright, I'm gonna chill out with that juice. Juice is fucking good. Um I fucking love it. I might buy some more of it one of these days. Um But it's zero point six percent nicotine by volume, which roughly is six milligrams. Oh my god, I'm gonna pay for this. Alright, so <clears throat> What would I rate the setup overall? Well, overall, I would give it an 8.5. It's a hard-hitting setup. It's moderately affordable if you can shell out the... Yeah, I say moderately affordable. It is a $210 setup. Um, but if you can afford it, I like if you can find the mod and the RDA, I would recommend it. For those who are already into mechs who want something that hits decently hard. Or just wants to add an Avid Life mod to their collection. Because one of the things, like, when I started getting into mech mods, one of the mech mods I wanted was an AV mech mod. It didn't matter which one it was. I just wanted an AV mech mod because I know that's what all the pros are using. And that's what majority of people I see that vaped. I, I see a lot of the a lot of people using Avid Life. And I was like, okay, well, that's a not really a high-end company, but they do specialize in higher-end mods, so to speak. Um, but a lot of their stuff is dealt more towards competition, which is why their mods hit so hard. Because they cho they choose the uh, materials carefully. They uh, It goes through a lot of, I believe, a lot of testing before they even release it to the public. But their mods are usually catered toward competition people. Or people who just want to check files in general. 
Um, but you will see a lot of people using AV mods. Me included. Uh, I probably won't buy too many AV mods just because of the price point that they go for, especially even on Skyvape's website. I've seen one go as high as like $400. Nah, bruh. I ain't spending that much on a vape. But, uh, yep. Yeah. The, uh, the, the, um, setup gets an overall 8.5. All right, so one last thing before we go ahead and sign off this video, I want to talk about mech mod cleaning because I don't like I see a lot of people do it. I'm not going to show you how to clean a mech mod, but I I can explain a little bit or some of the stuff that I used or use now. So the first thing when I got my first mech mod, <clears throat> I used Blue Magic polish that works. It's a uh, it's silicone based polish I think yeah silicone based. So it leaves a protective layer, which I guess is nice if you're always handling your mech mods, but I personally don't like it. I don't like the feel of the silicone layer that it leaves behind, or the silicone film that it leaves behind as a protector. So I used that for a little bit until I eventually ran out, because I used to use that shit for everything. Um, I even used it to polish silverware that that we obviously weren't going to eat with that my mom or my not my mom my grandmother wanted in her collection so i use that polish a lot i love it i can't find it anymore which sucks so i moved over to turtle wax uh i love turtle wax i i've always been a big fan of turtle wax products for i mean years um but uh i got some turtle wax polishing compound light to medium cleaner Restores lightly oxidized faded finishes to light, like new appearance. Okay, this is nice. This is nice. It does work. Uh, the biggest problem I have with it, and I noticed this with the um, with the Tsunami Mech because that was the main one I used to polish this. And it, it, for some reason, it only did this to brass. Like my uh, my copper uh, tugboat, the copper contacts and everything, it didn't do what it did to the brass on my uh, my Tsunami. It actually it did polish it. But something, it, some chemical in the polishing compound made the brass patina like crazy. Like, it'll stay shiny for like a couple of days. And then as more days go on, it, it, it literally got to the point where the patina started to green. Like, you know how some, some metals and when they patina, they get that like greenish color. So, yeah. So, I mean, that is an option. I would recommend that for, um... For copper mechs, that works fine. Um, but what I find works for both copper mechs, stainless steel, aluminum, uh, chrome, and all that, is um, Rasso. It's cheap, $2 at Walmart. Uh, you can find in the cleaner aisle. So that's that works good. I was really amazed. It works good, and it works really, really, really fast. Like... With the uh, the turtle wax, I'd have to sit there and rub and rub and rub, like trying to get the tarnish off. This I don't have to do that. Takes it off right away. I think because this uses uh, a stronger chemical. And uh, let's see what's. Uh, it is an eye irritant. Does it say what's in it? No, there's no ingredient list. But this has... Uh, I would recommend using this in a well-ventilated area because this shit has a strong smell to it. Now, for the longest time, polishing the Mac, the outside was easy. The biggest thing I had an issue with was the threads. Which, uh, I noticed the threads on my tugboat and the threads on my Avid Life are so much easier to clean compared to the threads on the fucking uh, Tsunami. Because some, I think one side of the threads on the Tsunami, I can't remember if it was for the top cap or the bottom cap, but the threads are so fine that it's really hard to, uh, it's really hard to get a, uh, a microfiber in there in between the threads to clean it, which is another reason why I stopped using the Tsunami, because it's just a pain in the ass to clean. Um, but what you can use for the threads, and I picked this up from uh, Eric Hutchinson. I'm probably pronouncing his name wrong, but he works over there at Avid Life, and he was showing how to polish an Avid Life mod. 
and some of the methods they use. I can't remember because I like watch half got came back like halfway through the video, but I seen him using three in one oil. Now you can use any three in one oil. Uh, they basically all do the same thing. Um, this one just it happens to be the one that was at Walmart. I picked it up and it works. It really does work. It gets all the grime and dirt out because it is. A lubric lubricates, penetrates rust, so it can be used as a penetrating oil, and cleans. It's a cleaner as well. Uh, is this petroleum based? Yep, petroleum distillates. Um, so yeah, and it also lubricates the threads. Uh, uh, some threads, or uh, the threads on my um, on my tugboat, they they were really grimy. They were kind of crunchy and all that and um just threw some three in one in there worked it back and forth uh wiped the threads off and now they're buttery smooth also another thing don't forget to clean the threads on your addy as well in the contacts and all that there you have to clean all of those to keep a constant con conductivity um, if you let just one of them uh, tarnish and you don't clean it, uh, that's electrical resistance, which means the battery has to work harder in order to get the electricity to the coils. Just putting that out there. Now, I want to talk about batteries real quick. So, I'm for my Max, I use uh, Sam or not Samsungs. I use Sony VTC5s, and I'm going to tell you right now. Those batteries hit fucking hard. And they last a long time, too, even with the low build that I'm running. They are doing pretty good. Um, so, yeah. But anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Don't forget to comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be alerted when we upload new videos. Anyways, I am Vaping with Mr. J. I'm And we are signing out.